covering all your local high school football games with highlights and scores. Gary Harris and the WVUA 23 sports team will break down the games and coming matchups. Now, Football Friday on WVUA 23. And good evening, everybody, and welcome into week number four of Football Friday on WVUA 23, brought to you by FNB and Banks Quarles. Now, we're ready to get going with highlights from 12 high school games this evening, including our Cross and Smith game of the week between Northside and Bibb County. But we begin with a Class 6A Region 4 showdown between Hillcrest and Bessemer City. Now, this Hillcrest squad looks like they have a special football team in the making. Both teams off to a 1-0 start in region play. First quarter, Hillcrest at the 9. Cole Frederick is off to a great start. Putt fakes and hits a leaping Corey Owens for the touchdown strike. 7-0 Patriots. They were just getting wound up. Second quarter, Hillcrest uses some trickery. Brian Robinson gets the direct snap. That's not a bad idea. Everybody's going to converge on him. But it's a reverse, and Frederick throws on the run and finds Owens on the sideline. That leads to a five-yard touchdown pass from Frederick to Torian Mayhew. Pats up 14 to nothing, and the onslaught continued tonight again through the air where Frederick has been dynamite so far this season. To Dylan Heydrich, 15 yards for six, 21 to nothing, and near the end of the first half, Hillcrest facing fourth and two, and the Pats give it to who else? Brian Robinson, the Bama commitment. Well, he's good. Gets a block. Reservations for six, 37-yard touchdown. Patriots win big tonight, 49-13, to and that is a good football team that Hillcrest beat. The best from City Tigers. Watch out for the Pats. They're looking like they may be a state championship contender in Class 6A. More 6A Region 4 action. Northridge traveling to Brookwood. This was a good one. First quarter, the game is scoreless. Brookwood quarterback Brandon Johnson is going to hook up with Click Nelson. Right down to the goal line. Doesn't quite get in, but Austin Cook does. For the touchdown, PAT no good. Brookwood up six to nothing. The Jags get it back though, and they get going. Kerry Shepard. And that's some quickness and some elusiveness. Look at the cutback. Look at the quick feet all the way down to the one yard line to end the first quarter. So they change ends and Shepard runs it in for the score. The Jags go up seven to six and Northridge goes on to get the win tonight. The Jags over the Panthers 31 17 the final score this evening. 3A Region 4 American Christian hosting Carbon Hill. Pick it up with the Patriots up 21 to 6, but Carbon Hill trying to get back in it will fake the punt, but the Pats aren't buying it. Lawson Pratt, it takes a thief. He gets the pick and ACA takes over. Looks like an opportunity for some more points for the Pats, but football security. You hear coaches talk about it all the time. What's the most important thing in the game? The football. Parker Davis can't hang on to the snap. Carbon Hill's Austin Ivy recovers the miscue. But the ACA Patriots get it back. And this time they get pay dirt. Britt Sparks takes the bubble screen and breaks tackles. See you later. Patriots up big 27 to 6, and ACA would go on to blow out Carbon Hill tonight by the final of 48 to 6 here in Tuscaloosa. Well, still to come here on WVA 23's Football Friday, presented by F&B and Banks Quarrels. Bryant traveled to McAdoo to take on the always tough Yellow Jackets. But up next, it's our Cross and Smith Game of the Week, a crucial Class 4A Region 4 contest between Northside and Bibb County. Which team took a big step for the region championship? Find out next when Football Friday, presented by F&B and Banks Quarrels, continues here on WVA 23. And thanks to Poole and Patio for sponsoring our cheerleaders all season long. And welcome back to WVUA 23's Football Friday presented by F&B and Banks Quarles. Let's keep it going with an important Class 4A region game between Northside and Bibb County. It's our Cross and Smith Game of the Week. 
Now, the game of the week, brought to you by Cross and Smith. And here we go, and what a game it was. This is what high school football is all about. At Northside tonight, great atmosphere for football. Two really good teams going at it. The Rams honoring Tyler Bigham, former Northside student who was tragically killed last month, and they wanted to dedicate this game to him. And Luke Stripling breaks one off and is gone. Seven to nothing, but back come the Choctaws. Big man D'Angelo Thompson barrels in for the score. Bibb County, this was one of those kind of games, back and forth. Northside, Preston Malone blocks the PAT. Rams going to the half, leading seven to six. Third quarter now, Bibb County fired up. Matt Hyatt keeps it himself and scores. Two-point conversion fails, 12 to seven. Northside fumbles on the ensuing drive. Bibb County gets it back, Hyatt this time finds Will Moore, who stays in bounds and gets it into the end zone, 18 to seven now. But here come the Rams, they're not done. Andrew Davidson finds a hole and turns on the burners. Bring it home, big fella. It's an 18-14 game, but Bibb County gets the win tonight. In our game of the week, brought to you by Cross and Smith, 26 to 20, what a football game tonight. Huge win for Bibb County in a region showdown against Northside. More 4A Region 4 action. Sipsy Valley hosting Holt. Holt is uh, having a tough season. And that would continue tonight. Sipsy Valley put on a dominant performance. Early second half, Ty Washington with a big run on third and one to make it first and goal. And on the following play, Willie Seeley. Three yard touchdown. Sipsy Valley leads 47 to nothing. Holt all you can do is keep fighting. And that's all you can do. I mean, you got to keep playing hard. They did that, but it just was not their night. This is an example of how it went. 20 yard loss on that play. Sipsy Valley gets the football back. And Michael Yeatman gets into the end zone. Sipsy wins it big, 53 to nothing. The final score in that ball game. Let's keep it in 4A Region 4 for another one. Greensboro at West Blockton. The Raiders visiting the Tigers. They love them some football over there in West Blockton. Trey Underwood pushes up the middle and across the goal line for a Tigers TD early in the first quarter, giving West Blockton the lead. Greensboro trying to match it. Wiggins to Varner. First down for the Raiders. West Blockton not happy with some of the officiating tonight. When they get the ball back, it's Trey Underwood moving the chains for a first down. After a punt, though, the Raiders get it back and get it into the end zone. They go for two, and it is converted, but not enough tonight. West Blockton at home wins it big over Greensboro, 40 to 14, the final. 1A Region 5, Holy Spirit tonight at home, hosting Brilliant. But it was Holy Spirit that was brilliant in this game. Titans already up 63 to 12 at halftime, and they keep adding to it. Josh Rogers, just right up the middle. Tackle somebody, 20 yards. Holy Spirit up 69 to 12. And in the fourth quarter, Trevor Brinster stays on his feet for six. Titans up 76 to 12, but what, you know what I just said, you got to keep playing. High school football is all about competing. Brilliant does that as Hayden Bryant is going to look deep and find Levi York in stride. That's as pretty as it gets. Wasn't a great night for Brilliant, but that was a great play. Touchdown, but Holy Spirit Catholic wins it tonight by the final of 76 to 20. And still to come tonight, two of the biggest high schools in the state are neighbors. So you know when Spain Park and Hoover got together tonight, it was a battle. But first, Bryant High School was looking to lead a stampede, stampede into McCalla tonight to take on McAdory. The Yellow Jackets were in the way. WVA 23's Football Friday presented by FNB and Banks and Corals will continue right after this. Cheerleaders, again, thanks to Pool and Patio Center for our cheerleaders 
segments all season long. Well, welcome back to Football Friday, brought to you by FNB and Banks Quarrels. Let's get back to the action. 6A Region 4, Bryant at McAdory tonight. And Bryant has a good football team, but they have played a really tough schedule. It did not get any easier tonight. When you go into McCalla, you got to be ready to play. Malcolm Askew, one of the better players in the state, to Willie Langham. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. McAdory goes up seven to zip, and they didn't stop there. Askew, one of these incredible athletes playing quarterback, hands it off to Phillip Brown. Brown knocks it on into the end zone, 13 to nothing. McAdory on top. Beginning of the second quarter, the Jackets keep the pressure on, and it's Brown. Here for another touchdown, 20 to nothing. And the Jackets kind of put this one away in the first half. Askew and uh, Langham actually hooked up on that touchdown. Askew to Langham. McAdory wins it tonight, 47 to 6 or 47 to 13. We'll go with 47 to 6 is what it says there on the scoreboard. We'll double check that. I got 47 13 here on my script. All right, AISA action tonight. Pickens Academy hosting Escambia Academy. And this game would turn out to be a wild one. And Escambia was doing most of the damage in this one. Chris Brown starting off strong with a big run down the right sideline. Later in the drive, it's Brown punching it in from four yards out to make it seven to nothing early on for the visitors. And it just was more Chris Brown tonight. This kid had himself a ball game. He's gonna pop out of there and nobody is going to track him down. Touchdown and Escambia Academy all over Pickens Academy tonight as we check out the final. 52 to six, the final score in that game. All right, we got a bonus game for you tonight. 7A Region 3, Spain Park at Hoover. Spain Park beat the Bucks twice last year, but not this year, as Hoover got some payback. A couple of field goals, and then this touchdown right here, and Hoover gets revenge tonight over Spain Park. There's the touchdown. Let's check out the final. And it was all Bucks, 26 to eight over the Spain Park team tonight in that neighborhood rivalry. All right, last night it was 7A Region 3 action as Tuscaloosa County High traveled over to Huffman. Huffman up 3-0 in the second quarter when Frederick Evans for County High does an unbelievable pirouette, never goes down, sticks it into the end zone. The Wildcats led 6-3, but Huffman takes the kickoff and goes to work. Radarius Brooks finds a hole, and dare I say it, He's got reservations for six. Huffman on top, 10 to six, right before half, big play in the game. Fourth and goal at the two for County High, and this is not the way they designed it. Huffman eats up the play there, big loss, big play. Huffman goes on to win it last night by the final score of 24 to 14. County High follows the two and two overall, 0 and two in the region. AISA AAA Region 1 action last night. Tuscaloosa Academy having a little bit of a down season are the Knights, and that's not a good time to go visit Bessemer Academy. Blaine Smith fires one deep to Gray Humphreys. He pulls it down in between several defenders for a touchdown, 6 0. The Rebels go up early over the night. Still in the first, Thomas Sims gets the handoff from Blaine Smith and takes it around the right side and finds pay dirt. After the point after touchdown, the Rebels lead at 14 to nothing. Now in the second quarter, T.A. punting and Xavier Coleman is fast. He's not quite that fast, but he's fast. And he's gone. 21 zip, Bessemer Academy, and the Rebels going to roll the Knights by the final of 46 to 3. That was on Thursday night over in Bessemer. Still to come, our Football Friday Band of the Week and also our complete Krispy Kreme Football Friday scoreboard. So stay tuned to find out how your favorite team did when we return right here to Football Friday on WVUA 23.
Tuscaloosa County High School, our band of the week. And now it's time for the complete Krispy Kreme football Friday scoreboard. Central's having a tough season. Falcons fall again tonight at Calera, 45 to 22. Demopolis rolls Marbury, 49 to 7. Oak Grove outslugs Hell County. A lot of points in that one, 55-36. Pickens County goes on the road to Marion County. Tornadoes take it big, 49-7. Gordo, the Green Wave, drowned out midfield tonight. Over in the Birmingham area, 41-6. Oakman wins at Green County, 34-6. It was Francis Marion falling to Aliceville. The Yellow Jackets big, 58-16. South Lamar wins at Barry. It's a big rivalry game, 22-8. Jemison over Sumter Central, 28-20. Lamar County wins at Mars Hill, Bible, 24-18. Linden, wow, 69 zip over McIntosh. Marengo Academy shut out Southern Academy, 48 zip. Patrician Academy over North River Christian, 43-6. Tuscaloosa Christian on the road. Wow, 98 points, 52-46. Tuscaloosa Christian takes it. Mountain Brook over Thompson, 20-17. Oak Mountain beat Vestavia 34 to 7. That's a little bit of surprise to me right there. And also Fayette tonight was a winner or a loser, I should say, to Dora 18 to 7. Dora over Fayette County. Some other scores there. You see the Dora and Fayette County score 18 to 7. Also not on your scoreboard, but I can report to you that Haleyville beat Cordova 35 13 and Hamilton top Good Hole. Good Hope, I should say, 35 to 24. Well, that's going to do it for the high school portion of the program, but we're far from done. Up next, our Alabama segment. Offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin is getting a big pay raise for the Crimson Tide. Details are coming up on WVOA 23's Football Friday, presented by F&B and Banks Quarles. Hi, we're the Greensboro High School Cheerleaders, and you're watching Football Friday on WVOA 23. Let's go! Alabama offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin is getting paid. Alabama has doubled Kiffin's salary for this season. The university's trustees compensation committee approved Kiffin's new $1.4 million deal on Friday. It runs from July 1st, retroactive to February 28th. He had been making $714,000 a year. Kiffin was the only returning assistant who didn't get a raise in June, but he had been receiving a buyout from USC through June 30, and that was big money. So Alabama has made the playoffs with a new starting quarterback in each of Kiffin's first two years, including last season's national title. Overall, he's going to be making around, around $2 million when you add it all up if he stays with the Crimson Tide. Welcome back, everybody. We've talked often this week about the fact that Alabama's opponent tomorrow, Western Kentucky, is a quality football team. They're also a tempo team. And Nick Saban says the fans can be a factor in hampering the Hilltoppers from getting their calls in from the sideline. You know, this is another one of those fastball teams that – are going to go fast. They're going to Nike check and try to communicate plays at the line of scrimmage and give signals from the sidelines. And uh, I really do think it's a huge advantage for our team if uh, their offense has to work against noise and has to go on silent and, you know, helps us know the snap count indicators. So um, I'll, I'll be harping about that, you know, all week long. So hopefully our fans will respond to that. And Western Kentucky arrived in Hoover this afternoon. The team is headquartered this evening at the Hyatt Regency Birmingham Winfrey Hotel. Western will spend the night in Hoover and then bust to Tuscaloosa tomorrow for the game. Hilltopper senior defensive back Marcus Ward knows what the Western Kentucky team will be up against in the form of the Crimson Tide tomorrow, but he's pumped about the opportunity to play the Tide in Bryant Denny Stadium. They are the number one team, and we're, we're not we're not missing that point. But you got to play them just like it's any other team. Uh, I mean, the fans are going to be there. I mean, they're 100,000 plus. You'll probably never play, um, or if you do, you're lucky to play in an atmosphere like this. So, but you still got to block it out. I'm very excited for the game. I've been watching Alabama since I've been growing up watching football, and I have a bunch of family coming. They're actually bringing the bus, so it's going to be a going to be a great turnout. Ahead of his first NFL game this weekend, former Alabama Heisman Trophy winner and current Tennessee Titans rookie running back Derrick Henry stopped by Dick's Sporting Goods tailgate event in Hoover to showcase his football and tailgating skills and a trick shot video with social media sensations legendary shots. Henry was able to sink a shot from the rooftop of Dick's Sporting Goods. DH said it was a fun way to get in the spirit of the football season. Man, it's, uh... It's definitely a good event, you know. This sporting goods did a great job putting this together with the tailgating, be able to interact with the fans and have that college atmosphere again and be able to be out here just before the game starts, so it's been good. 
And the Alabama football weekend is just beginning. Kick it off with us. We've got all kinds of sports coverage tomorrow morning here on WVUA 23, including, of course, Crimson Tide kickoff at 11 a.m. until noon, live from right here on the University of Alabama campus. Previews, analysis, special guests, including Alabama baseball coach Greg Goff. That's CTKO, brought to you by Alpha Insurance tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. right here on WVUA 23. Thanks for watching Football Friday. Thanks to all the people that made it happen here at the television station, and thanks to you for watching. Have a great night and enjoy your football weekend. So long.